finding the voices. Talk show by Monica Ingunam. I'm a huge fan of finding the voices. You're doing a great job. For Manipur. Manipur bu pretty vida masatak pa. Good positive uh, voices and you know make those voices more visible. Wanted yeah. our voice to reach in all the corners of the world. Finding the Interesting voice. people. In finding the uh, finding voices on people the... from our own place. Interest of the kahina. Interest of share positive stories and inspiring stories and bringing all the good stories of Manipur. Finding the voices. Welcome to Finding the Voices. Right now, we have a guest speaker joining us from London, um, Sampa Gupta. Welcome, Sampa. Hello. How are you, Monica? To start with, uh, if you can introduce a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Sampa Vinam Gupta, and uh, I'm the founder of Cone Woven. It's a social venture, and I'm seeking to promote and encourage uh, Manipuri textiles to a larger market, and la just to encourage women weavers of Manipur largely. Um, I have a textile designer by qualification and um, only recently i started to follow my uh, follow my dream of um, promoting manipuri textiles how did you um, i mean you have a background in your education for textiles so before we get into that can we track back and if you can share a little bit about your childhood your family your bringing um, I, I guess a glimpse of your life when you were in uh, imphal manipur Actually, I've not lived as much in uh, in Fall as I would have liked to. My father was in the Indian Army, and uh, we've lived largely in Calcutta. And I've finished my most of my schooling and my college in Calcutta. And Manipur was a special place that we used to go to for every vacation and for every um, every possible uh, school holiday. We would always be in Fall. Mm. We've, my father has been very keen on us staying in one place uh, to study and the kind of educational opportunities that Calcutta offered, we obviously we didn't find that in uh, Imphal at that point. So, um, yeah, so I studied in Calcutta, a great place. And uh, that's where I, despite being so far away from uh, Manipur, I realized the distance actually made me um, connects more uh, strongly and more passionately with the with the culture of Manipur. Okay, okay. So you did your schooling in Calcutta, and after That's that, right. what did you do? Um, I pursued geography honors in Calcutta, and um, I studied in a college called Loreto College. Uh, after that, um, I went ahead and I pursued a, a short-lived career in uh, telecommunications. And then I pursued, while I was doing my, uh, while I was working in the telecom industry, I realized I had to pursue my dream of uh, becoming a textile designer. And so I applied for the National Institute of Fashion Technology and got through the rest of history. <laughs> wow, no, so from childhood, you had this aspiration to go into, um, you know, designing. So was there someone who, um, you got the inspiration from, or um, I mean, how did you get inspired to get into that line? Because you did mention that in between you pursued telecom too. That's right. Um, I've always wanted to be in the, um, I had always wanted to be in the fashion industry, but uh, back then it was not something that, you know, that most parents would encourage. Everybody would have to be either a doctor, an engineer, mm. IS officer. Uh, so I think I let my, I kept my uh, dream of joining the fashion and textile industry for a long time. Uh, but watching my 
a book my grandmother watching her we it sort of um it kick started uh, an idea in my head and um, i was surrounded by people who were always in awe of manipuri textiles and uh, it made me more inquisitive about how the textiles uh, of manipur why don't people know about it why is it something of such a great awe when everybody talks about banarasi saree they talk about kanchivaram saree but nobody talks about manipuri textiles in the same manner and that really intrigued me so i had to had to pursue that a little more all right so after you got your admission uh, in such a reputed institute then then what happened you must have been excited <laughs> it was very exciting i didn't believe i got through even when i had when i was already there i put a it was an eye opening experience because part of me imagined that the textiles and fashion industry would be quite um, uh, quite easy to go through because in the so many creative people that it would be <laughs> quite there was nothing like that it was really a lot of hard work lot of sleepless nights i mean we would go weeks without sleeping uh, but um, over there i learned more about textiles i learned more about textiles of india also of, of textiles of the world and the mention of northeastern textiles wasn't as much as um, as the other areas were covered especially manipuri textiles for some reason it's not there are lots of aspects of manipuri textiles that really uh, need to be spoken about more during my years in uh, at nist i think i found out that if i if we don't explore this more then we we might be in the danger of losing out a craft to a generation so that was one of my greatest learnings from uh, nift so after you passed out from there then what happened i basically got married and moved away from my india <laughs> so i worked for some time in the uh, the export industry in and i was designing all sorts of things but um, it was a very short lived uh, time that i spent working in the industry then i then we moved to london and I, once we came here i couldn't pursue textiles at all because here they don't really recognize the um, degrees or the qualifications from india you have to do mm. one at least one course in the uk so that you are at least um recognized or employable so i didn't do anything in textiles for the last i think about 7 years so well, i think it changed i mean of course now i've decided to um pursue my dream and just do it on my own and be an entrepreneur rather than waiting and working for someone else or expecting someone else to help me fulfill my goal of being a textile designer and that's how con woven was started yes that's how it, that's how the journey began into con woven okay wow okay so which year was that um it was 2013 hmm. i was i was just the idea started then of course it's still it is it's still at its infancy because i didn't pursue it full time till about a couple of months ago mm-hmm. but i started to work towards it i started to slowly develop ideas and develop uh, plans on how to um, make it work and what will work in this market because i started uh, i started designing keeping the international market in mind so there's a lot of back and forth in terms of production in terms of the kind of designs that would sell and i finally feel like it's it's time now for cone woven to be um, introduced in a larger way right so tell me a little bit in detail about how you operated you know you do the designing and then um your team back in manipur are uh uh you know working on your designs and how how you know if you can elaborate and let us know a little okay. bit about the details so i design uh, i started designing towels and uh, i chose towels because it was it goes back to what my 
a book weave so she makes mm-hmm. towels so from there i was i thought this is the best place to start so i can start by introducing uh, cotton hand woven towels so i do all the designing the colors the kind of uh, sizes all of that is designed and done uh, and um, prepared by me here and i communicate that to the weavers back in impa and they weave till now they were sending the the products to me in the uk and um, all the processes um, which is actually actual making and the actual putting together and presentation is all done in impa and i just sell it okay wow that's so wonderful to know that you know you have uh you are actually starting an initiative wherein the products developed made packed in impal is being marketed yes. and um you know uh, marketed to the people in the uk so you are right now uh, focusing on cotton towel products only i've uh, started kitchen linen as well in a very small way kitchen but largely it okay. has yes so like kitchen towels and um place mats and napkins so that's what i'm looking at at the moment apart okay. from that towels has always been my main uh, product so what has been your response from um from the uk customer you have had so far it's been lukewarm <laughs> uh, because most mostly because i've not marketed as much and this is basically i've just begun the process of marketing it more vigorously and more aggressively the all the people have shown the products to and people who have bought have been very positive they've been very encouraging as well and uh, i'm getting a lot of good feedback from india as well where people are beginning to ask about whether the cone woven's products are also being sold in the rest of the country the rest of india as well so mm-hmm. i think um, i mean it's it's nice it's very it's very encouraging to see such good response i obviously have to market it a little bit right. more than what i have yeah so you yeah you were taking the time to uh, design it to have the setup yeah. and now that you have that setup in terms of the design and also the That's team true. back in manipur um, mm-hmm. who can support with the production and so now you are in the process of marketing and um, yeah. i guess outreaching to the market uh, um and i'm sure you know that would happen uh, and we wish you luck on that thank you thank you so for the india market uh, i mean so now the product is uh, not only going to be uh, i mean initially i thought it's only going to be in uk but what i'm hearing is it's not only going to be in uk but you might have it internationally yes. available everywhere thank and you. also in india yes so how can we buy your products um do you have a website or how how do we order it uh currently i'm selling at the um at the website called etsy so www.etsy.com yes, yes. uh mm-hmm. one of my favorite uh, websites and mm-hmm. uh, i'll be launching very soon with a very nice uh online portal called jiska jiska.com mm. it's run mm-hmm. by two manipuri entrepreneurs and uh, i hope i'm hoping and i'm very feeling very positive that that they'll be able to help me market the products uh mm. yeah because they already have a portal with a very good presence right. so if your yes. product is available over there uh, the outreach will be more that's right yes. um can you share a little bit on um your team you know who is helping you in this production um and how it is working out for you my team in manipur actually consists at the moment of three people and um, that's my mother uh, and my abok and i have another weaver as well uh, so she comes and goes basically and um, my grandmother is my key weaver she's an she's an excellent uh, craft person uh, weaving is impeccable uh um, my mother does all the procuring of the yarn and having it to be sent for dyeing and to prepare for weaving 
and uh, along with Pina Rani who is my cousin's wife she helps in making all the end tassels and making the product look more presentable i am looking at more weavers at the moment i'm interviewing a few people to join the team as well so how many towels could you make at one time and how long does it take just to you know give give an idea, an idea. for people like me uh, how long does it take and you know what does it entail to have uh, the product so it starts with procuring the yarn which doesn't obviously that you just go to the market and speak to the uh, merchants who are selling uh, the yarn and from there if the colors are not available the colors that you want then you send it forward to be dyed in the colors that you want that mm. process itself takes a couple of days because the yarn has to be dyed and then dried out and then it is sent to be laid on the warp i'm not very clear about the my tell on terms for laying the um, yarn onto the loom mm. but that process itself takes a takes about a few days to do mm. so i would say it takes about a week from the yarn being procured to the yarn being set up on the loom hmm. and then the weaving the weaving it depends on how fast you want to go so i a book can weave in a week's time she can weave about 30 to 40 pieces depending on how she's feeling hmm so it's a lot you can it depends on on, on the size of as well that you want to get woven mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. one sitting would take about it takes about 10 to 14 days for the entire process to get over from the picture it looks like um the product is a little thicker than what we traditionally see in manipur is that correct yes because i've used a uh, use a slightly thicker yarn i have not used the mm. really thin paddy yarn because if the fabric is that nicely and densely woven it's more mm-hmm. absorbent so to give the to i got inspired by seeing the um woven towels of turkey so they mm. use a really thick weave and they use a very dense um cotton so i wanted to basically um use that as a uh, starting point and uh, use use a slightly thicker yarn which could be which would have a longer life basically I right and also i think no no and also for the international market that's what i was thinking because we are used to the thin um cotton towel yes. because we yes. kind of hand wash it right but for the international that's market for the most part people don't hand wash it and it's machine that's wash true. and uh, when i look at your product i thought that it was um custom made and geared towards the international market and for the uses of people who are you know a bit used to uh, washing everything by machine yes. and still want the luxury of having the <laughs> cotton <laughs> because the traditional paddy will just get obliterated in the in the washing machine it's not going to survive right <laughs> right right that so very has to be hand washed right also, okay so, yeah go ahead um i was i also got inspired from the the some of the um moirang trees that we have really simple one i used to always imagine that they would make a really good towel as well so that's where two ideas came together basically and i thought that we can use that kind of fabric as a, a towel uh, as well mm. monica i'm finding the voices finding the voices finding the voice what don't the air force get get shot that I could see my father. <clears throat> who came to me in my headmaster because he was unable to pay the fee. I'm sorry. Well, because we need such story for people to have faith in the government and the system that yes, it's working. And Let's bring peace in our home state, people Manipur. We have got uh, the job without bribery. Mm-hmm. They'll do justice to their job, and they will help raise the standard of Manipur.
me machin kreha do ai adu paraga tingau gi hai re hai re rakko Most of your management is done from London. Um, yes. So how how is the management? And I do know that your family is backing you up in Manipur. Um, mm-hmm. But with your you know because you are the person who is having the main idea of design and texture, and I am very sure you uh, you know I'm wondering how you are managing you know the final product and. if it didn't come out was there any occasion where in it didn't come out the way you had envisioned or any challenges if you can share on that yes of course it is challenging to actually um, have the item designed here and then produced in imphal and me not being able to be there physically all the time to check the quality of the uh, weave or the ch- quality of the yarn or the colors because i might send a certain color print out but it might not necessarily you know mm-hmm. turn out to be the same color that i hoped for uh, mm-hmm. but um, thankfully i don't have any challenges when it comes to color because my mother and i share a very similar uh, sense of colors but we've had challenges in terms of um, of actually giving the yarn to someone to weave so she was a very nice lady but that we gave her the yarn and she used her own design she used okay. yarn <laughs> she used her own design she improvised and she put polyester threads into it as well oh okay so when i asked her why she was she was very sweet and she said well, this looks really nice she told me uh, um she told my mother basically that this design is quite nice and my mother said well we didn't want that to be woven and it it wasn't even pure cotton so i couldn't i can't tell anything that is mm. not your cotton because that goes completely against the ethos of why i started cotton woven mm. so i did have a challenge there to communicate with people that this is exactly what i want it has to be 100% cotton uh, the distance and my 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 telon both are big barriers in communicating mm. um what i really want mm. and uh, that's where that's where that's where my uh, mother and my book Uh, they play a very big role and my father as well so mm-hmm. they've been very they've been very crucial in keeping the balance but we've had we've had to let go of uh, an entire batch of towels because somebody had used um, the wrong thread on it so is there any challenges in procuring the cotton yarn in manipur or like do you have to import it from somewhere or are those uh, threads all from manipur the threads are procured from merchants in manipur mm. um of course that makes us very susceptible to all the um all the incidents and all the occurrences right. that happen buns and curfews and uh, any unrest so we become dependent on that to an extent for uh, mm. the yarns to come in but apart from um that i think you also it's the weather it's probably many reasons why things don't really work out the way we want to or the cotton yarn doesn't come in on time we've not started importing it uh, importing mm-hmm. or bringing in um, directly because i think even the merchants and vendors in in far even they deserve a chance to get their business i we can and we want to actually just communicate with them directly and tell them this is what we want so that it is their business is also intact and we also have a relation going with the merchant mm-hmm. so we can ask them to get the kind of um cotton that we want and uh, rather than getting it indirectly uh, from say southern india large different part of india that's where all the cotton mm-hmm. comes from so have you ever thought about the progression like you know when people move to machine and things like that or you would you know continue to encourage people um uh, doing the traditional way you know and yeah it just came up to me like uh, with how time are changing like do you think about that or 
uh, it's just the idea that you know you want to encourage people to continue doing what they want uh, what they have been doing i am i'm very pro um, handmade so although the there will always be a challenge in terms of uh, machine made products which are cheaper because they can mm. be made in huge quantities right but i don't but i would i don't want the craft and the art of weaving to be lost mm. and that can only happen if there are patrons for the craft and if there are people who buy the items as well if it if nobody is buying it then obviously there's not going to be uh, no weaver is going to feel enthused or it's not going to feel encouraged to pursue uh, pursue the craft and we need to teach more people we need to get in more women um, we were to be more uh, involved in this traditional craft form as well i i for one would um, i'm hopeful that despite the machine made and the machine um, all the uh, machine loom made uh, products that are available in the market i'm very hopeful that people like you who are very you know who really really appreciate and uh, handicrafts and uh, handmade items would continue buying and hence the craft can still be kept alive for for generations to come so yes i right. no I, and I, I, that's why i was very interested when i saw it and i was um uh, so it really inspired me that you know somebody in your generation is um uh, actually doing something sitting in london um having a team working back in manipur and you are actually marketing the product which is really admirable so yeah you're right i mean there are a lot of people who does uh, love uh, our work and also i think mm-hmm. some of our challenge has been that it is not available at our fingertips yeah. as what we would order i other item online but to know that you mm-hmm. know now we can actually order it online that's awesome because earlier we would um, kind of depend on going home and getting the stuff yes. but now even if you are outside of manipur you have uh, you know this opportunity to uh, buy it and get it shipped right at your doorstep so yeah thank you so much for the initiative and i'm very sure like you said you know it's just starting but i'm sure it would go a long way and you would uh, oh, we you wish so you like a lot of success <laughs> thank you thank you so much as only yeah. through people like you that we can actually people like me can actually talk about such initiatives so what else is um in your pipeline a launching a launch um, in india is mm-hmm. in the pipeline and um, i will take up the offer seriously for scarf mhm i will <laughs> um apart from that um i just want to develop the products more and i want to employ more people and maybe god willing i will visit impal very soon to speak to more people about uh, continuing mm-hmm. the craft as well so mm-hmm. it, i don't want to be just a dormant uh, participant i want to be there actively right. encourage and get people on board mm. so um, you know now that you have started this and it's um, it's visible and um you know you just have to make the outreach a little more wider um but initially when you started like you said you know traditionally in manipur um the career choice um maybe even going in this line uh, may not be appreciated by many did you face any challenges in terms of you you know like pursuing um and going after uh, this initiative i did but uh, um it was i think by the time um i graduated from college because i'd worked for a year after i finished my college actually that was really good because that helped me collect a bit of funds so that i could get into nift as well so um although my father would have actually really appreciated if i had joined you know one of the government services but um i think it was very really important to follow follow the dream and to follow my um, true calling 
and uh, looking back i think even my father is quite happy that i did that <laughs> but yes back then it was a big challenge i don't think it was met very with a very um, it wasn't very openly um, accepted at that point in time because it, nobody knew how much money people who were in this industry were making in today's time of course it's a completely different story because designers are making uh, uh, i would say a decent amount of uh, respectable amount of money so a lot of young people from manipur are in designing at the moment which is absolutely amazing <laughs> yeah but i think uh, yeah in 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 our generation right now um the perspective of career choice has changed and it's mm-hmm. not so much like uh before um and you know that's again one of our goal in our show to call people of different career and um talk about uh, the mm-hmm. details so that people get a glimpse of you know what you do what are your challenges or um one of the common uh question what we have is oh you know can mm-hmm. you survive on that are you sustainable so you mentioned a little yes. bit about the money part and uh, not to quote numbers but what i am hearing from you is that um this is a very sustainable business and profitable yes. and you know you could very well survive um if you uh even if you pursue it as a full time and you could make a livelihood out of it absolutely it's a, the way the industry is developing and the way the uh, career options and different avenues are opening up for young people today design uh, as in fashion design you know textile design is a great way to go we already have quite a few people it is during my time there were a lot of people from um, manipur and nagaland and mizoram who were coming and studying in nest as well but now it's a considerable more amount of um, more numbers have joined the industry and we have also seen that they are if they are not into designing later on they definitely get into teaching in the design field as well and they're making enough money to have a very decent lifestyle all right so from your experience being you know coming out of manipur um, having grown up and educated um, in kolkata and in different parts of india and then now um, staying at london um, what is your learning and what would you share um, to us the only thing that comes to my mind is don't give up on your dream so definitely just pursue it to the best that you can it might not happen now it might not even happen in say or years time but if you keep at it then surely enough if you are serious about uh, what you want to do and if you keep taking small step towards it you will be able to achieve what you set out to do that it's been it's taken me a really long time to come to this point right but, uh, i'm very glad that i that i didn't give give it up i could have but i haven't given it given it up and i'm glad that i'm at this junction now where but i'm talking to you so it's it's i think it's it's very important to pursue one dream completely right so never give up your dream and never, never you know just pursue and follow your dream and it must yes. be very very satisfying i mean i myself looking at your product i am so proud you know that you are doing something um for manipur for your dream um at the international level so i can only imagine you know how much satisfied you would be touching and feeling you know the product which you have made and marketing it out so definitely uh really- yeah <laughs> all right so um i know that you have been following finding the voices and yeah. um i thank you so much for all your support um, and your comments and it means a lot to me and to all of us um but again um just wanted you to share a little bit um, about finding the voices comments feedback critics anything it's it's really interesting you asked me that because the first time that i found you on the internet it was through one of your blogs do you remember chakum 
<laughs> yes, <laughs> that was my initial was, blog. Yes, yes. And I don't think uh, you've ever looked back from that point. You've just moved ahead. And when you started finding the voices, it was, it was so um, inspiring because you went ahead and you met so many people. You interviewed a whole lot of absolutely amazing personalities. And it's nice to hear the voices that you've brought forward. And uh, I, it's, it's commendable that we can sit here in different parts of the world and have this <laughs> conversation and have people back home listen and be part of this conversation as well. So I'm, I'm very, very proud to be associated with you. So thank you so much. <laughs> no, thank you. Really, it is like I, when I started, I didn't know that it would take me here. Um, I knew that I had to go, but you know, sometimes as you walk the path, a lot of people would come and add ideas, and that's how actually uh, what happened to Finding the Voices. Um, so I believe that this is something I have started, but it is a platform for the people, by the people, and so I call it, you know, it's, it's really like your own platform because people have been so kind enough to mm -hmm. consider it and adopt it as their own platform and we all are working together. Um, so that You, you have know, a wonderful team as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. I am so yes. blessed yes. and uh, very wonderful volunteers, freelancers, team, you know, who has really done everything from their heart. So, yes. So thank you so much. Finding the Voices